Do it, Maki. Save the Jujutsu world. <laughs> What's up, guys? Dylan Hunter here, and here we are to do a quick discussion on how Maki Zenin could hypothetically, though it won't happen, it literally won't happen. If it does happen, I'm gonna lose my good mind. I'm gonna actually go buku boggers. But how Maki Zenin could save all of Jujutsu with one single action. But we have a decent bit to talk about, so let's not waste any more time. Let's hop right into it. What's up, guys? That guy with a pencil here. And fun fact, did you know that I have it on me and I keep it on me at all times? And another fun fact, Maki Zenin also happens to have it on her and keep it on her at all times. But of course, there's a slight fundamental difference between me and Maki Zenin. Number one, she could throw me like 15 miles. And number two, I've actually been like involved with the Jutsu Kaisen plot a little bit just because like I've been reviewing and talking about it. Maki's kind of been given nothing to do. Like this is, <laughs> this is a weird thing to mention, but considering what she is, right? Like essentially the second coming of the Faint Breaker the god of man toji fushiguro she kind of has nothing to do like within the general role of the narrative i thought she was going to be involved in the kenjaku debacle but uh no yuta kotsu appeared in now currently kenjaku's head is on the ground i thought maybe she'd be involved in fighting her ume but no that appears to be a hikari only endeavor i thought that maybe kind of, sort of, possibly she'd do something against Tsukuna with everybody else, but right now that seems to be the Yuji and Higuruma show. And, well, there was supposed to be the Kashimo show, but he's Kashi cooked right now. So, what's up with Maki kind of getting nothing to do? I know, apparently, I guess she's just the weakest? Like, I mean, he ain't told this expeditiously, but now, nah, apparently, just the narrative, he's like, nah, Maki's far, I guess, but it'd be like that when it'd be like that sometimes. But it feels weird, right? Like, Maki in Sakurajima got a massive power-up. Maki pre-Sakurajima got a massive power-up. Suddenly becoming physically equal to Toji Zenin by beginning to achieve a perfect heavenly restriction, even on the verge of absolute perishing, becoming so powerful that she was able to wipe out the entire Zenin clan in sequence, including one of the most powerful grade ones we've seen in the entire series, in Naoya Zenin. For her to do that, and then go through Sakurajima and get an awakening to make her the equivalent to Doji Fujiguro, and then go even further and reveal that the blade she currently carries in remembrance of her sister is not simply a fancy little sword, but a blade that can negate durability by directly attacking the soul and ignore the toughness of all things. The fact that she's not being utilized or built in any of the plans feels weird, especially considering some plans seem like they'd be, I don't know, fundamentally built for her. Let's look at the big plan around Kenjaku. Okay, we're going to send in Takaba to distract Kenjaku, and then when Kenjaku's guard is down, we're going to get someone. Okay, we're going to get someone to remove the dumpies. You know? He's going to be caught off guard. His senses may be dull. Takaba's going to whip up some sort of magic. Now, if you were allocating resources during this whole debacle, right? You have most likely. Gojo Santoru cooked as you're planning this. This is the contingency of Gojo Santoru fail, because obviously if he wins, he would go deal with Kenjaku instantaneously. This is your plan. This is your big brain mode. If your trump card falls off a cliff, and by falls off a cliff, I mean, like, let's consider that's part of part of Gojo, the cliff that the top falls off of, you need to optimize your resources very, very well. I understand sending Hakari after Uraume. Though, Billy, that may be like an entirely independent thing since Kashima wanted to fight Tsukuna alone and people were about to, and by people, I mean her Ume was about to interfere and make that a 2v1 real quick, even though Tsukuna definitely wouldn't have needed the help as we see. But even still, sending a card after her Ume makes sense. You know, he needs to get a jackpot up apparently since they aren't going to prep that during Gojo's fight against Tsukuna. So he needs to get a jackpot up. He starts getting the roll. Her Ume is a much safer person to start spinning for jackpots against than Tsukuna. I understand wanting you to back at the battlefield as quickly as possible. Second only to Santhu Gojo unusual abilities, he literally had an entire month to download half the verse. Like, remember, 
He has Mechamaro footage at his disposal, plus Angel right there, plus the entire Sendai colony, which he already stole two of the techniques from, plus how many other sorcerers he encountered, the six, I do believe, that he encountered before he ended up running the Sendai gauntlet, plus who knows what else Bro could whip out if he reviews the footage expeditiously enough or gets some explanations on other techniques, such as an explanation of Star Rage from Choso, considering Yuki literally just explains it all. And Choso's most likely watching that entire endeavor, so he could give Yuta the Carfax. So, yeah, you're gonna want to have Yuta back as quickly as possible, because he's one of your most viable options. So if you're trying to optimize the utilization of Kenjaku by using Takuma and having him distracted so Kenjaku's an easy dub, who would you send? Would you send the person who has the most exorbitant amount of cursed energy on the good guy side period by the way this is just a period point blank thing unless Sakari has jackpot and has infinite cursed energy yuda has the most cursed energy even more than Santaru gojo did meaning that if the plan fails even slightly with kenny you're going to have him be omega aware of what's there behind him waiting to give him the good old it's not the left right good night it's the one, two, no more head for you. Like, you want to send that guy who you also need at the battlefield as quickly as possible in case he needs to jump in to deal with the whole scenario of a Sukuna that may be nerfed after going against Yuji and Higuruma? Or would you send the person with literally zero curse energy? Who has a blade that can negate durability? Who also, you know, just can't be sensed because they have zero curse energy. Like, if you're going to go with a distraction plan and you don't actually plan to fight Kenjaku head on, then why not send the reincarnation of the Fate Breaker? I don't know. Like, I, I legit don't know. I know, I guess this is just, I'll, I'll admit. Though, admittedly, I still have to make that video. Yuta is stronger than Maki. That's just implied by all the different statements, and obviously he has access to a much wider breadth of techniques. Maki's techniques are punch, kick, and sword. And while those are some decent techniques in of themselves, Yuta has, like, who knows what. So, yeah, Yuta's clearly a superior combatant. And I can even somewhat see the vision. Like, say Takuma doesn't work out and you want to still take out Kenny. Yeah, Yuta would have a better extended matchup against Kenjaku, thanks to his RCT, thanks to Cursed Speech, thanks to Rika. Like, he would have a better extended matchup in case the plan failed. But you need Yuta for Sukuna. That's, that's the thing. You need him for Sukuna. It's not worth risking him on Kenny, an ultimately lesser threat at the moment. So why not send the Fate Breaker? It feels... A little bit, a little bit, a little bit strange to me, especially considering how much glaze Gage gives to Toji. Because it's Toji. That man loves Toji. So I'm shocked Toji's reincarnation isn't getting much to do, especially in scenarios where she'd be really, really useful. So then I got to thinking, right? Like, I understand why Irumaki isn't being utilized in any of the plants. I don't know. Irumaki. Bro doesn't even have an arm. He can't even he can't even give you two thumbs up. He can only give you one. You know, I understand why something like that film disgusting, absolutely horrific waste of sp ugh, ugh, hand. I understand why that thing isn't being considered viable for any of the plans, because Sukuna would probably literally pick it up, open up the belly mouth, throw Panda in there, let it bounce around a little bit, and then oh, and then bada bing bada boom panda's cooked. I understand why Momo, Miwa, heck, even Mei Mei and Kusakabe aren't considered viable threats, but you got somebody there who can do the darn damage. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? You have someone there, the equivalent of Toji Zen, and someone there who was able to go head to head. And Yuji should know he was literally there. <laughs> Yuji should know he was able to witness Maki Zenin go head-to-head -head physically with 15-finger Maguna. Maki's no slouch. Why do you think she's the weakest of the heavy hitters just based on, like, statements and stuff like that, no matter how weirdly the matchups go with them? If you think she's the weakest of the heavy hitters, fine, but she's definitively a heavy hitter. Everyone else has had some aspect of plan built around them. Yuji has a part of the Higuruma plan to nerf Sukuna. Yuta has a part of the plan to go against Kenjaku. Hakari most likely is part of the plan to go against Urume. All of this has been established, but Maki's kind of just sitting around. She's given the same precedence as Miwa. In fact, she's given less precedence than Miwa. In 244, she's not even referenced as a viable option for anything. Kusakabe doesn't even give her the time of day 
in the conversation of, okay, these are certain things we need to do with certain people. Talk about that higher billing than Maki. That's what we're talking about. So, of course, as a Toji toe taster, as a Maki meat muncher, if you will, I can't stand by this. I really can't. I really cannot stand by this. I need to find some way to make my girl useful. And I think there is a way. No, it's not going to happen. Like, I said this before, and I'll say it again. It's not going to happen. Then again, I didn't think Kenny was going to get decapitated. And I also didn't really think Ojo was going to lose. So, usually whenever I say something can't happen, I was ended up wrong. The only thing the only thing that I ended up being 100% right on is that Kashimo stood absolutely no chance against Tsukuna. But then again, like, I think everybody named Mama knew that. So, it's, it's, it's a little bit a little bit hard to argue that I should take that one as a dub for me. So, I'm, we'll put that to the side. But... With the mightiest Maki meat muncher right here, about to lay some claim for y'all. We got to take advantage of what Maki has that characters like Yuta and Hikari don't. And Itadori, arguably. We don't know that much about Itadori. I'll talk about him in his own video, especially considering how he made Tsukuna jiggle wiggle a little bit, make him clap a little bit in 244. I need to give Maki a role only she can complete. Now, how do I do that? Well, let's review Maki's special traits. Number one, she's a heavenly restriction user. Well, user's kind of hard to call it. Like, I wouldn't call her a user. It's like, it's, she doesn't just have, like, heavenly restriction downloaded on her phone. She is a, she's a victim of heavenly restriction in the sense that she has zero cursed energy. She has extremely advanced perception. And she can kind of hop on air. So she can kind of just appear places. She's also one of the fastest characters in the entire series, whether it be in travel and or combat speed. She's inarguably... Like, once again, like, it's really hard to get 15 fingers of gonna scaling. Like, I think, like, three characters have that. Like, direct scaling. Like, you can argue Yuta through, like, some weird Kenny stuff if you want to say Kenny's stronger than 15 finger, but I highly doubt that. I'm, you have to, like, you have to, like, do gymnastics to kind of get Sukuna 15 finger, at least, with physical stats inferior to, like, characters like Yuta and Kenjaku. There's There's ways you can do it. I may even make a video about that, but 15 finger, he kind of cliffs on majority of the verse. So, like, direct speed scaling and combat speed to 15 fingers, not nah, this time I'm gonna sneeze at, especially when his physical movements aren't being suppressed, y'all. So, extremely high combat speed, extremely high travel speed, no cursed energy. Wait, 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 wait. What comes, what comes with no cursed energy? Hmm. One, you're pretty much impossible to be sensed, right? Like, you can kind of walk by people in the Jutsu Kaisen world, but if you have cursed energy, especially any decent amount of it, heaven forbid you're someone like Yuda Okotsu, but even average sorcerers, they'll be like, wait a minute, they can sense you. But luckily enough, due to being a heavily restriction user, even those with what should be some of the best, if not the best sensory capabilities in the entire verse outside of Satoru Gojo, like Ryo Sukuna, are caught off guard by Maki. He didn't realize Maki was there until she literally came into his peripheral vision. She tanked Nui's lightning blast, walked up the stairs, pulled up, posted up, hand on the hip, sword on the drip, and was like, yeah, was good. And then Sukuna noticed her out of the corner of his eye. So if Sukuna, 15 fingers, able to be caught off guard my monkey, you know that lack of cursed juice, it's poet. You may not be able to sense that at all. So a lack of sensory is good. It's pretty good. What else comes with zero cur Oh, wait a minute. An immunity to barriers. Because you gotta remember, barriers are kind of funny in a way. They don't, like, recognize general physical structures. Like, for example, a barrier wouldn't recognize my water bottle as something to contain or attack or anything like that. If anything, if I were to open my own domain expansion, Horizon of the Captivating Yapper, my, I was about to call it by, by its like industry name, my water bottle would not be trapped within my domain because this is a building. It'd be, if anything, it'd be phased through. Like say my domain were to encapsulate half of it, like half of it, would, it would still be there, but it's just a building. It wouldn't really do all too much. Domains overlap space, but they specifically target things with cursed energy. Meaning, the rules of my domain expansion, Horizon of the Captivating Yapper, it wouldn't actually do anything to it. It wouldn't be stuffed with my infinite yapping. But, with that being the case, Maki and Toji, since they have zero cursed energy, are also kind of considered buildings. Rocks. Stones. And you know what they say about sticks and stones. 
they'll break your bones, even if words will never hurt you. But uh, see, that's the thing, though, right? With Maki, like her best physicals with just like hits and stuff like that, she draws a couple droplets out of 15 finger Maguna. <laughs> that's like a, that's barely it and she also takes damage from him. so obviously in terms of just raw crazy physical she's not doing all too much she's not hitting harder than rika harder than ryu arguably just a base punch from maki man i even hit as hard as a base punch from yuda considering how beefy that boy is same thing with the car wait a minute she's not just a heavily restriction user with zero cursed energy she also has a blade a particular blade. The soul split. Katana. Now, what's so special about this blade in particular? Number one, despite being a cur- Jeez, I need to wash you. What the heck? What, what's, what's going on inside of you? Why are you so dirty? But not only is this blade special in the sense that it's a cursed tool, but strangely enough, it kind of fits into the idea that Cursed tools, despite having cursed energy, don't exactly compromise much of anything in terms of a heavenly restriction user's sensory immunity, for lack of better terms, whether it be generally by people or, even better, by domains. Notably, the Soul Split Katana, despite being confirmed to kind of just be my, at least Maki's variation of it is kind of just Mai. She has a whole conversation with Mai inside the blade. So Mai is kind of just vibing inside the sword. So that is a soul with curse energy that made the curse tool, which is imbued with a curse technique, which presumably has curse energy. It's still an object. It's still kind of like a water bottle, meaning it won't be targeted or affected by rules inside a domain. We see this as simply put in the Noia fight. And even then, for just barriers in general, Maki's able to pass through barriers with the Soul Split Katana on her. So clearly, cursed tools can be passed through and out of barriers and still be effective within them. Hmm. Hmm. So with that being the case, what else does the Soul Split Katana have? Oh, Soul Split Katana, <laughs> naturally. It doesn't actually cut conventionally if it's being wielded by someone who can perceive the souls of even inorganic objects. See, the beauty of Soul Split Katana, the reason why it's such a good weapon, and the reason why it's honestly a, maybe a 7.5 in terms of techniques of weapons within the Jutsu Kaisen series, is because, hypothetically, if I were to swing at something with my ability to perceive souls, even the souls of inanimate objects, yes, I can see the soul of my water bottle. <laughs> I promise you, trust me, I'm a heavily restriction user. Not at all. But yeah, let's just say I am. The beauty of that is that I don't actually need to worry about the durability of anything. That's the, that's the fun part. Because as long as I can see its soul, I'm going to cleave straight on through that bad boy. It can be as durable as Curse Noe. It can be as durable as five plates of stainless steel. I'm going to cleave straight through it because I can receive the souls and attack directly there. Choji uses to rip straight out of the dragon, the rainbow scale dragon that Ghetto summons, which is the hardest and strongest of all his cursed spirits. It has the hardest hide, but of course, to the souls of Katana, that doesn't matter. Same thing with Noya, a relatively bulky character made complete fodder by the soul split Katana. It's interesting to think that this blade can just negate durability and like Maki and Toji can't actually be picked up or affected by domain rules. Wait, can't be picked up or affected by barriers or domain rules just like Maki? Who's currently the biggest threat in the manga right now? The biggest known threat, at least. Obviously, there are characters like Ume who are extremely powerful, but currently, despite their lack of appearance within 244, despite the fact that they should be right there, both Ume and Akari are currently dealing with each other right now. So I'd say Ume is definitely a threat, but currently a neutralized one. Kenjaku as well. I believe Kenjaku is far from finished, you know. <laughs> I'm still gonna hold my stocks on the main villain basket. That's just me though. He's the orchestrator. He's his A and Let him cook. Let him cook. Give him some time. 
But of course, Kenjaku also is, once again, a head on the ground, and while he could cook, what he could cook is very, very vague. So the question is, and the answer is, I'm not exactly sure. What could we cook with the strongest threat in... Oh, Sukuna. Ryoman Sukuna, the king of curses. Of course, of course. He's most certainly the most viable and dangerous threat right now. I mean, he just took the previously believed strongest character in the verse and turned him into two of the previous believed strongest character in the verse. Kind of three, though, because like I think like one of Gojo's arms is also detached from his upper body, and then you have the other half, and then bada-bing, bada-boom. You got Gojo squared? Gojo half? I think like the square root of Gojo is how you would do that one. Or just Gojo divided by two. So Sukuna is definitely the biggest threat in the entire series right now. Indubitably, indubitably. If only there was some way we could stop this madman, this beast, this monster. If only there was some way we could hold him in place and make sure that he could never actually do another act of violence as long as we hold him in that one place, in that one position. If only, if only. Wait a minute. Higuruma. Ah, I see, I see. Okay, Higuruma. With his domain, no violence is allowed. And considering the fact that we don't know how much of Sukuna's body's been properly healed, if it's just been a continuous incarnation thing and he still has the brain damage, it's most likely that he can't even open domain, whether it be because, one, it's an act of violence, considering Malevolent Shrine is literally called Malevolent Shrine, or two, he literally just can't open domain because of the brain damage. So, with that being the case, trapping him in Higuruma's domain means that Sukuna's under the rules of no vi- Ah! Shoot! Higuruma's domain is viable, and the rules of non-violence affect everybody inside it. Everybody with cursed energy. It doesn't really matter how cool or how great or how epic it would be if Higuruma and Itadori could jump Sukuna in the domain, because you can't jump in the domain. This is the one rule breaker of Jujutsu Kaisen. If you jump Sukaisen, you can't jump inside Higuruma's domain, because no violence is allowed for anyone who can be recognized by the domain and its rules. Wait a wait 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 a minute wait a minute. So you mean to tell me if we were to somehow let's say introduce a character who was immune to domains and their rules and gave them something that would hypothetically allow them to bypass the cliff that is the durability wall of who should be the bulkiest character in the entire series, true form Ryoman Tsukuna. And we were to throw them into the scenario that's currently set up at the end of 244 with Sukuna trapped within the domain of Higuruma, which very explicitly permits nonviolence and enforces it for everyone who's trapped inside if they have cursed energy. If we could get someone in there who could still use violence and pass that durability wall, we could hypothetically end Sukuna right now. In fact, we don't even need the trial to run. Of course the trial would be nice. Getting the DP on Sukuna would be fantastic. The executioner's blade would be wonderful. And of course, confiscating his cursed technique, whether it be one, whether it be two, whether it be the entire thing, would be great. But even still, it's Ryoman Sukuna. In fact, it's so Ryoman Sukuna that even if we confiscate his cursed technique, not only is he most likely more than skilled enough with cursed energy to not actually struggle with you know, cursed energy reinforcement, even without the utilization of his cursed technique, like Higuruma explains some sorcerers do, but also he still has Kamu Toke. At any moment, he could, as the blade literally suggests, whip out a lightning blast and just boom! And suddenly those massive lightning bolts that Kashima was able to tank because of his cursed trait would be absolutely unstoppable to deal with for anyone without that cursed trait. So clearly, Sukuna, even if the DP is gotten and the Executioner's Blade is acquired and we top that off with nothing more than, I don't know, the confiscation of his cursed techniques, no matter what, it's still gonna be too much for our cast to handle reasonably because of how many other options Sukuna has. So the best thing to do would be to take somebody who is immune to the rules of the domain and thusly would not be affected by the statue of nonviolence, while Sukuna is mostly immobilized 
and cannot fight back, as that would be violence, and he has cursed energy, he has the most cursed energy in the entire series, so he would undeniably be forced to follow the non-violence rules. If we take somebody who could bypass his durability and end him in an instant, we could save the Jujutsu world, couldn't we? Maki Zenin. Should I just say Maki? The one who left it all behind and the one who destroyed everything. So yeah, enough semantics. Yeah, legitimately right now, if Kenny <laughs> wanted to end the series this year, he could literally just decapitate Tsukuna. Same way he did with Kenny. Like notably Kenny's beheading was extremely anticlimactic for how much buildup we got for an actual proper battle between Yuta and Kenjaku. But if Gage wants to keep on that trend, everything's set up. This is not. This wasn't even like a thing that took like many rational thoughts. The moment that Tsukuna got trapped in Domain, my brain immediately leapt to this. Because Maki would not be affected, flat out. She does not have Cursed Energy. And notably, the Blade, for the longest time, it was a question on whether or not, well, maybe the Blade would be affected by the rules of the Domain. Maybe since it's Maki slash my soul and stuff like that, maybe the barrier rules would still end up affecting and then Maki wouldn't be able to do anything with it. Or the Blade would be stopped or something like that. But no, no, we've seen... Numerous times that cursed tools, despite having cursed energy, are not actually properly recognized by domains, their sure hits, or barriers in general. Not at all. So, entirely possible. This is a thing that could happen. And once again, the biggest cliff, the biggest cliff to overcome with Sukuna in general is his durability. His sheer tankiness. Obviously, he just has crazy stats all around. He has crazy striking strength, crazy AP, crazy technique, crazy speed, and all that. But the thing is, even if you hit him, the hardest thing to do was actually do some serious damage to the man. Obviously, he has probably the highest reinforcement in general bulk in the series and one of the best physical bases, if not the best physical base. Once again, he's literally perfect. As Kashimo and the narrator describe, his body's literally built for Jujutsu. He's the bulkiest character in the entire series by a long run. But we have someone well set up by this point who has the ability to just turn that durability off. Just absolutely remove it. With just a single swing of a blade. And the thing is, right? There ain't no reason why she couldn't do it. Like, the, especially considering the idea that if she walks in from the right angle, Sukuna wouldn't even notice. Once again, this wouldn't be the first time she caught Sukuna off guard. But even then, he was lucky enough to have her in his peripherals. Because he was facing this way. And then Maki came from this way. And he was like... Oh, you're, oh geez, I need, a, I need a shave under there. But that was a thing. If Maki, because remember, they're in a triangle format. If Maki walks in from the right angle, just straight up behind, unless Yuji and Higuruma give up the game somehow, they're like, oh, someone's here. And then Sukuna's like, huh? Then maybe he could move around in the domain, but he may actually be bound to his spot. Because we see in the battle with Yuji and Higuruma, when Yuji lunges out to attack, he immediately ends up right back where he was. So Sukuna may not even be able to move due to the nature of Higuruma's domain. It's simple as that. So Sukuna may be locked in place, would not be able to censor, and Maki would be completely unencumbered with a blade that is able to do things. The only issue with this is one, it would never happen. Would never. Would never. Gege would never be that kind. Even though, once again, it's the same thing I said with Gojo and why I thought Gojo could have actually won against Sukuna without, like, discrediting or removing Sukuna entirely, the last finger is still up in the air. Even if we were to beat this 20-finger Maguna that's in turned into hand form Sukuna, it wouldn't actually really be, like, much of a dub because, like, the last finger's still around, his soul can still incarnate and hypothetically be the basis for the merger. That's still a thing that could happen. But... One, it would never happen, because, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm not that delusional. Like, I'm, I'm a Maki beat much until the day I go, but I'm, I can't, I can't be much that hard. There's no, there's no way KG would give Maki that kind of dub, because it's just too nice. And number two, you could make the argument that Sukuna's soul is extra bulky extra, extra thick, like thick with three C's, thicker than a possum with the mumps. Thicker than a jar of frozen peanut butter. It'll break your knife. That thick. You could argue his soul is just that jacked and juicy to the point where soul split may not work. Like, his soul may just be that strong. We see that his soul is exceptionally strong when Mahito goes to... Come here, little ruddy. And then Sukuna's like, eh, no. And then knocks Mahito's hand away and does damage to him. But 
that's about the only excuse. And that's the only thing that I could see being used to defend Sukuna from this. Because otherwise, it's an alley-oop. It's an easy setup. It's an easy game. I can tell they didn't plan for this, though. Because no one even brings it up in 244. We, 244 is essentially the plan chapter. And no one brings this up. This is like the first thing I'm going to flee to. <laughs> Is the first thing I want to lead to. Because notably, Sukuna is extremely powerful, but he still seems verse locked. Like, I don't think his RCT is so crazy that he could regenerate his entire body if you were to remove him or liberate his head from his torso. And if you want to be extra careful, say, okay, RCT comes from the brain, do what you'd have didn't and aim for the brain. Like, this is where the jaw is. So, like, aim around here. Right in the center of the head. I know his body structure is different. I would just remove the head just to be safe. Like, I would remove the head and then immediately slash for the brain itself. But, even still, regardless, he can't fight back. Because, once again, Maki is a heavily restriction user, so she's immune to all the domain rules. Sukuna has similar properties to having restriction users. Like, he has precog and he has the ability to hop off air. That's just a Sukuna thing, though. We have no idea how that works. But, with that, we could literally have him head removed he goes to regenerate he starts to regenerate he tries to swing against amaki he's still in higurum's domain he can't do violence he's teleported back on the same spot and amaki's like oh i didn't know you could heal from the soul i would have attacked you earlier as maguna with it okay and then slices the dome piece in half and just keeps on slicing once again they don't actually have to progress the trial judgment is impatient for sure but if maki shows up quickly enough she can just bifurcate sukuna and then trifurcate sukuna and then quantificate sukuna and then Pentakate Sukuna, and then Hexakate Sukuna, and then what's seven? Septicate Sukuna, and then Opticate Sukuna, and then Noctikate Sukuna, and then Decacate Sukuna. That sounds so wrong. I don't know what. Well, I know why Decacate sounds wrong. And I don't even think that's. I think it's wrong. Isn't that's not even the word? I'm not even sure if like half the words that I said were real. But she could just keep on swinging. There's no reason not to. This would be the easiest way to get rid of Sukuna. Like I'll, I'll be completely real. I don't think there's any. And like that's the only hiccup though. If his soul is durable enough to ignore Soul Spigatana, you could you could literally like if I was gay, gay right? Say I'm gay, gay and I specifically want this to not work. I won the easy way is to just not let it happen, which is why I think is going to happen. This is literally just straight pencil meat munching. If you're wondering, straight some meat munching, Maki meat munching. Oh then I got the pencil where we meat munch Maki. But if I'm gay, gay and I want to make an excuse for why this wouldn't work, I would literally say it's a contest of souls or soul durability, and soul Spikatana, since it's imbued with my soul, it'd be my soul versus Sukuna's soul, and Sukuna wins, or whatever, and bada bing bada boom, it doesn't work, and then Maki's like, oh no, I gotta retreat now, and then, but then, that's the thing though, then you make Maki 100% useless, and that hurts, <laughs> that hurts me, I feel like they would hurt Gege too, don't you like Toji, Gege? Don't you want to give Toji a, a crazy dub? This would be, this would be the craziest dub, and once again, the beautiful thing is, right, because I know y'all be like, oh, Pencil, you need to hop off the meat, dog. Like, there's no way that would happen. That'd be super anticlimactic. But number one, look at Kenny. And number two, Sukuna's final finger is still around. We don't know where that thing is. It's like you can you can still have Sukuna get his just desserts by Yuji later on with the final finger or something like that. Like, once again, I said the same thing when I was talking about Gojo versus Sukuna before that ended. Dude, Sukuna's not fully here. There's still a piece of him wandering about. What are you doing? move but there's a piece of him still wandering about that is yet to be claimed on his on his when he was filing his cursed taxes there's still a piece of him still roaming there's still so much that still needs to happen and could happen with that final finger or it could just never go mentioned again just like this would never go mentioned this will not happen if this does happen you will hear me scream in you will hear me scream on pluto if this happens, because of how hyped that would be. But this wouldn't happen. But it's possible. It's entirely possible. At least from my understanding of how everything's been set up about this scenario. This is perfect time to turn Sukuna into a fraction. But that's what I think. Please what you guys think in the comment section down below. Do you think that this plan is even possible? Do you think it's feasible? Do you think there's a reason why the cast and crew didn't come up with it other than plot? Do you think that there are flaws and holes in this plan based on how I established it? And how would you improve the plan or make it better or if the plan's even possible at all? Please let me know all that and more in the comment section down below. If you made it all the way to the end of this video, please leave the Soul Striker. S-O-U.
L, not soul as in like soul the foot or soul as in solo. The soul striker in the comment section down below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. Once again, please remember to leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. And make sure you hit that little notification bell so you do not miss out on any videos that come to the channel. Also, also I do have a Patreon down below where you can support me for as low as one kind of one dollar a month. Get things like exclusive videos, early content, and more. You can also now become a member of the channel for as low as three dollars a month to get the same perks and more. Some of those perks will include the live reaction to the next chapter of Jujutsu Kaisen. Now, I want to thank you guys so much for watching once again, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. This is Dag with a Pencil, writing off. I'd like to give a thank you to our three dollar members, Connor Plains, Reddle, Four Seven Six Five, and Greyhound. I'd like to give a another thank you to our five dollar patrons, Victor, Sean, Midnight Gem Lord, Kevin, Demix LND, and Igneo. I'd like to give a honga donga thank you to our seven dollar member, Autumn's Morning Lazo. I'd like to give another gargantuan thank you to our ten dollar patrons, Robbie Uchio, Joaquin, Idem Okami, and. China Doll 09. I'd like to give a thick er, then a snicker. Thank you to our $25 member, Alex Ice Rose. I'd like to give another thicker than a frozen jar of peanut butter. Thank you to our $25 patron, Calvin Elder.